Andrew, Andrew de Cruz is here, and uh, he is the writer of the most recent article in Toronto Life magazine, The Best Places to Live in the City, a mostly scientific ranking of all 140 <laughs> neighborhoods in Toronto. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, I have no doubt that this will fly off the shelves because when you're talking real estate and yes. breaking it down, neighborhood by neighborhood yeah. everyone wants to know where they are yeah people are kind of tribal about their neighborhoods in Toronto they you know love to think of themselves as a beacher or like someone who would never live north of Bloor or someone who'd never live south of Bloor mm -hmm. so yeah it's the kind of thing that yeah gets I feel people like talking. a West End girl I'm like I a am West End, End girl, girl yeah. and that means is you'll never go East End you'll never go nope. East the Don Valley no, I right? did once have live, you been yeah I did once live uh, in Cabbage Town and I actually okay. loved it but I in my heart I know I'm a West yeah, I would never live I would never live on the west side of the Don ever Really? I mean, no, I This is the it. point of this article, right? People feel so strongly. And it's not like you can fully objectively say, this is why it says it's a mostly scientific ranking, but what we tried to do is come up with the most objective way that we could. So when it says the best, this means property value or this means services that are available? What's best? It means a whole bunch of things. So basically what we did, we took all 140 neighborhoods. The city has them sort of broken up into these official designations. We looked at a whole bunch of factors like real estate stuff or, you know, schools, crime, transit, uh, the tree coverage, all kinds of things. I think there were something like 50 factors in the end. We grouped them together. We asked our readers, uh, we asked Toronto Life readers, there was a poll on the website, you know, what's most important to you? We sort of assigned weightings by category, and then we just sort of ranked them out by the numbers. Let's get to it. Yeah. Uh, we obviously can't do them all, so we're doing the top five. Number five, High Park North. High Park North, yeah. So High Park North is the area, it's north of High Park, um, it's between High Park and the Junction. And what I love about this neighborhood is that it's close to so much awesome stuff. The junction has been, you know, changing a lot recently. There's tons of great new restaurants and bars and breweries and stuff like that. Uh, but the amazing beautiful park is right below. You're close to Roncesvalles. You're closest to Bloor West Village. It's a, it's a really nice neighborhood, yeah. And number four is Mount Pleasant West. Yeah, Mount Pleasant West. It's kind of a funny one. And I was surprised how high it came up in the rankings, but, you know, the numbers don't lie, it's mostly scientific. Um, <laughs> this is kind of the most super urban neighborhood in Toronto. The density here is as high as Paris, which, you know, is really, really high. Wow. Um, these are lots of apartment blocks built in the 60s and stuff, and right in the middle you have this beautiful sort of 1930s uh, old North Toronto neighborhood, and it's sort of, when you think of Young and Eglinton, this is the neighborhood we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, it's got tons going for it, and it's really the most city-ish neighborhood in Toronto. I mean, until recently, there weren't that many people living in the core of the city. So when people thought about downtown, like obviously it's, it's right here. But, uh, you know, when you talk of really urban living with people living close together, it's up there. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you really uh, love the, the High Park uh, neighborhoods in this. The well, yeah, High Park did pretty three, well. High yeah. Park Swansea. Is, is, well, so what is it about High Park? Well, I, mean, I mean, this is not a city that has tons of massive grand civic spaces for people to hang out in. You know, Toronto is a little bit more conservative. Um, but High Park is gorgeous. It's 400 acres of a huge park right in the middle of the city. There's people living all around it, you know, in like a, in like a upside down U shape. And they're great places to live there. The streets there are, are, are gorgeous. Roncesvalles, you know, flanks High Park. And there's, you know, in the last two or three years after the construction finished there, there's been so many new restaurants and shops opening there. And so, yeah. And Swansea's a funny little neighborhood. It's, it's like a little like, tiny town, right? Yeah. It, it only amalgamated into the whole city in 1967. So it's really like held on to its own kind of thing. And, it, and you go there and... It just has a whole different feel there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Banbury Don Mills is number two. Banbury Don Mills is number two, and I think that one is maybe a little bit controversial. Uh, my parents live just outside Banbury Don Mills, and we're not happy that they, you know, their neighborhood did not make it in this uh, rankings. But yeah, Don Mills is, you know, like one of the one of the oldest sub suburban developments in Canada. What's special about it is when E.B. Taylor was developing this thing, he wanted to make sure it didn't feel all cookie cutter. He got a whole bunch of different builders, made the houses all look sort of different from each other. Uh, and it's turned into like this really lovely neighborhood, tons of trees, you know, lots of variety in terms of house types and, and apartment types and stuff like that. How much has the shops at Don Mills changed that? Because it really, it, you know, Don Mills used to, like, the global sleepy, main sleepy, right? station yeah. is up there, so yeah. we all know Don Mills pretty well. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But it has really, it has changed in the last five years. Yeah, I mean, it depends what you're looking for, but those shops at Don Mills have, I think, brought a whole bunch of, maybe a younger 
crowd there, and lots of families are moving in there. And there's all kinds of stories there which are sort of surprising to find north of Bloor. Like there's an anthropology there, which, you know, again, you might right. not expect to find Kinda up in the middle of a, a bit. suburban development. Let's get to number one, Rosedale Moore Park. Rosedale Moore Park. So, you know, this is the thing we've been getting a lot of. There's, there's some flack for perhaps, or but. Ritzy, very ritzy well, it's ritzy, town. right? But there's a reason why it's so desirable. It's a reason why the real estate, you know, the property values there are so high. It's a beautiful area. I guess it's just, you know, not far from where we are right now. And, uh, you know, beautiful trees. It's one of the only neighborhoods in like the old part of the city which isn't built on a grid. It's built on these sort of crazy winding streets. I don't know if you ever drive through there, you get totally lost every time you go there. But, you know, just gorgeous old houses. You know, when people think of like a really beautiful Toronto looking neighborhood. I think a lot of people think of these sorts of houses. Rosedale is a phenomenal neighborhood. Yeah. The fact that you're saying it's right near here, but when you're in there, you feel secluded. Well, it's it's funny. It's almost like a suburb right in the middle of the city. You can walk to the subway. You're right off of Young Street, but uh, you have just this real sort of quietness and people who Absolutely. live there really value it's that. It's going to cost you, though. It, it is sure going to cost you. <laughs> it's going to cost you plenty. Although Andrew? it's surprising. There's a lot of like renters there, too. It's not all exactly, you know, the stereotype. Just mostly. Just, just like three quarters, not 100 percent. Yeah, exactly. Andrew DeCruz, he is the writer of the article appearing in Toronto Life, the best places to live in the city for the ranking of all 140 neighborhoods. Check it out. Thank you so much. Thank you.